How we doing, huh? What's up, Pat? I see you up in here. Yeah, y'all look good. Look like y'all got health care. That's what's up. Y'all look well taken care of out here. We got dental benefits. Look at this. We got vision coverage. I see the glasses. Hey. All right, yeah. We back in the Four Eyes community. We are back in style. There's people out here faking the funk, wearing frames and no lenses. They didn't earn this. I'm visually struggling for real. This ain't a game. What I look like wearing accessories just for show, man? I'm a grown man. Everything you see on me, I need. <laughs> Everything. There's not a wasted piece. You see this Band-Aid? This is a mold check for cancer. That's that grown man stuff. <laughs> I'm visually struggling for real out here, man. Ain't no games. I feel like glasses add character to your face anyway. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, it's just an extra element of character. You ever look over your glasses when you're unhappy with something? That lets people know you ain't playing around. <laughs> that look over the top of the glasses, that's a visual right there. Like if they mess your food order up, you be like, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. <laughs> I didn't order these chicken fingers. I'm not paying for this. I'm not paying for this, Steve. Is this you? I'm not paying for this. You can't look over your contact lenses, look like you're having a stroke at the dinner table. <laughs> hold on, I didn't order these chicken fingers. What, are you having a stroke? What's going on with your face? No, no, I'm looking over my contacts. <laughs> you look dumb. You're scaring the kids. You ever snatch your glasses off in the middle of an argument, let somebody know you ain't playing around no more? The dramatic courtroom snatch off, like, who you think you're talking to right now? Because I'm not the one, all right? But your vision is horrible. Your target moved over here, but you're still looking in the corner. Because I am not the one. You understand? Oh. You over here? Where you at? I know you in here somewhere. I know you in here somewhere. Bark, belch. I know you in here. You in the closet arguing with an outfit on the hanger. Like, who do you think you are? Oh, you're quiet now, huh? You're quiet? Got nothing to say now, huh? <laughs> I'm happy to be alive. I'm 40, man. I'm happy to be alive. 40 is hot in the streets. I got two sons, they old, you know what I'm saying? My kids are old, 18 and 16. I started early. My kids are soft though, man, they soft. I grew up in the 80s when we waited in the car while our parents went to the grocery store with the windows up, with the windows up. We took that brain damage like champs. Our health was on the line, but we took it. We didn't complain. Everybody was in there, the dogs, the cats, everything. We was in there sweating together, losing weight and brain cells. We took it. We didn't whine. We didn't call social services, okay? That was the 80s, you know what I mean? One TV in the house. One TV in the house, not in every room. You had to watch TV together as a family. You had to agree on the program. You had no options. You ate dinners you didn't like. I look at my sons now, I walked in the kitchen, he in there watching uh, Netflix while he's eating cereal. I was hating, I was jealous. I was like, man, what you in here watching? Oh, Daredevil, oh, Daredevil. Look at you with your lavish TV show as you eat cereal. At the table, he watching TV at the table. I didn't have that option, man. The TV was in the living room when I grew up. And you couldn't eat in the living room. You had to finish your food before you can watch TV. And when you're a kid, food didn't matter to you like it does now. When you're a kid, you just needed TV and outside. That's all you ate. Now, you would put your life on the line for food, man. People be ready to get out of church to go eat. They'd be like, come on, Pastor, wrap this up. I am hungry. The devil is hungry. People be dipping, you know what I'm saying? Watching TV show. You know, you know what my TV show was? Why I eat cereal? The back of the cereal box, season one. The back of the cereal box, season one. That was the best show on TV. You poured your bowl of cereal and you turned that box around. You read that box the whole bowl.
Oh, riboflavin is up in here. I still don't know what riboflavin is, but it was in every cereal. It was in every cereal. I think cereal is the true soul food. I think cereal is the true soul food. It's not mac and cheese and yams and ham. It's cereal, man, because you'll eat cereal for no reason. <laughs> you ever notice that? You're not even really hungry, but you're eating cereal. That's for your soul. <laughs> it never counts as a meal. You never get full off cereal. It never ruins your appetite, nothing. If you had a bad day, you get some cereal, it'll make you feel a little bit better. <laughs> or you had a dynamite day, let me top it off with some cereal. Just to make, just the cherry on top. Hand me that cereal. I love cereal, man. And I always ask people, what's your favorite cereal? People be giving me all kind of answers, you know what I'm saying? Who? Frosted Flakes? No, that's a sweet one. They get stuck in your teeth hard, man. When you eat Frosted Flakes, they be sitting in there for days, just pure sugar right to your cavity. Tony the Tiger be like, <laughs> this was my plan the whole time. It's funny how your taste in cereal change as you get older. Like me, I could just eat a bowl of sugar and milk. That was it. <laughs> teeth just falling out all over the table. I ain't had no teeth as a kid. Right? <laughs> Pure sugar, you know what I'm saying? People love Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch will tear your mouth. <laughs> Captain Crunch will tear your mouth to shreds. Your mouth is shredded after Captain Crunch. All, all three of them. The peanut butter, the regular, the crunch berries, they in there working your gums. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your smile is bleeding because you love Captain Crunch. Like, How you doing? Are you a vampire? No, I have some crunch berries. You look like you've been on True Blood all night. Then when you get old, you care about your health. You're like, I got to switch it up. You switch over to Raisin Bran real quick so you, can, so you can be on the regular. Like, I got my little Raisin Bran. You know, I got to stay regular out here. People be eating Raisin Bran in the bathroom. Like, you got to stay regular. Raisin Bran is heavy, though, man. Raisin Bran sits underneath the milk when you pour it in there. They look like just a bowl of milk with just little pieces over the top. They look like crocodiles in your bowl. Be... Yeah, we in here. We in here. These raisins is in here. Two scoops of raisins, man. That cinnamon toast crunch, though. That cinnamon toast crunch. It makes the best milk. After you done that cinnamon toast crunch milk, they need to sell that in the store just as cinnamon toast crunch milk. Let me get that cinnamon toast crunch milk right there. I love food, man. Food is life. Food is life. That's all I care about, man. That's the only thing I like about Donald Trump. He's fat. I know he's a foodie, he be eating out here. You can tell by how he holds his hand when he talks. I have a great relationship with, look at this. This is the dipping hand right here. This is the, this is the spinach artichoke dipping hand. I have a great, I have a great relationship with the spinach artichoke dip, it's gonna be great. He be eating out here, Donald Trump be eating. That should have been his slogan, Donald Trump be eating. <laughs> Food is life. I be cooking for my kids, man, they never appreciated it, man. I was like, man, y'all soft out here. My kids are soft, man. They didn't walk home from school. I regret that. Because you always, you always want to give your kids a better upbringing than what you had. You always want to up the ante, but I'm like, let me pick y'all up every day. I should have let them walk. Because <laughs> walking home from school makes you who you are today. <laughs> Depending on how you got home, that's who made you who you are today. You know what I'm saying? 
If you racist out here, you got beat up on your way home from a particular race. Those people that can't handle crowds, they can't handle a lot of people, they socially awkward, they got rides home. You know what I'm saying? They never interact. Because my walk home from school was treachery, man. It was like Lord of the Rings. It was epic. It was giant spiders, pedophiles, gang members. You got to go through all that. You know what I'm saying? I want to set up some fake gang members for my sons to walk through. Just to see, just to see who they are. You know what I'm saying? I want to set up a fake pedophile van, just be posted up. I want to see what makes them get in the van. You got in the van for Jolly Ranchers kids? I raised y'all better than this, y'all Starburst kids. I don't like the pompous attitude too when they, when they text me when they get out of school. We're ready. You're like, you don't know what I was doing. You don't know what I was doing, I'm out here working. We see you across the street, Dad. All right, man, get in. <laughs> Just get the car, man. Sick of y'all, man. I'm getting crankier now that I'm 40, man. Crank is life. But you ain't got time for nothing when you get older. Man, I ain't got time for this. That's my goal, too. I ain't got time for this, man. I got more time on my hands, but I ain't got time for nothing. I'm using my shirt pocket now, too. I discovered the shirt pocket. When I turned 40, I looked down, I blew out the candle and looked down at my pocket like, I can put stuff in here. Because you notice only older men use their shirt pocket. They put everything in their shirt pocket. Keys, wallets, shoes, receipts, socks, sponges, clipboards, church pamphlets. This church is huge, by the way. This is the Ikea of churches. They were selling me furniture in the foyer. Like, you want the bed set? You want the bedroom set? We got mattresses. It's a warehouse. This ain't no church. I would like to come to a church like this because the pressure's off if you're a visitor. I don't like going to small churches because when you go, they always want to put the visitor on blast. And I'll be trying to be low-key at church. I'll be trying to be in the back, get the word, and get out of there. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, mm-hmm. I might put some in the collection plate. I might not. I don't want that pressure. I just want to get the word and get on out of there. I don't want nobody seeing me. My eyes be closed. No eye contact. But they always get you. The pastor be like, where my visitors at this fine Sunday? Always be those extra people that point you out. He knew, pastor. He ain't been here before. Well, here they come. Because I went to a church in Pasadena. They sing to the visitors. That's too much pressure, man. Don't sing to me personally. I don't know how to react to being sung to, man. Like, what do you do when you get sung to? And they were creeping up on all sides. They were like, we welcome you. 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 We well when they put <laughs> when they put their hand on me, I burst into flames. I was like, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for this. That's too much pressure, man. I felt like a girl that got pulled on stage at the R&B concert where y'all just be sitting there taking it. I don't need that kind of pressure, man. Don't be singing to me, man. Let me get this word and get out of here, Pastor. Hate it when the pastor be putting us to work too much, too. If we go to the church, you standing up, sitting down, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. Turn your book to page, stand up, sit down. Turn to your neighbor and say this. Turn to your neighbor and say that, man. Just, just clock in, Pastor. This is the only day of the week you work. <laughs> and I'm such a foodie, man. I only go to church on Communion Sunday. I only go to church on Communion Sunday because we get a snack mid-church. If you're not familiar with Communion Sunday, it's where you eat the body of Christ 
and you drink the blood of Jesus, which is represented in a nice beverage. beverage. I don't know. We all know what the blood of Jesus is. It's that Welch's grape juice. It's so good. But they only give you just a little bit. I need a full eight ounce of that blood of Jesus. It's been a long month. Let me get that. Is it sinful to double back in line to get the communion? Is it, is it bad? I, du I double back. I get back in line all the time. I'll be putting on the disguises, putting my glasses on. I'll be taking old ladies' hats. Yes, yes, praise God. Yes, God is, God is so good. But that body of Christ cracker, that needs work. The body of Christ cracker, I don't know where they're getting these crackers from. They taste like notebook paper in chip form, man. Where are they getting these crackers from? No seasoning, no flavor, no sodium. Like Jesus had more seasoning than this, man. He was in the sun all day. He was, he was honey roasted out here. Jesus was honey roasted out here. I need the crackers to represent this. This is the body of Christ. They need to upgrade the body of Christ. Can we get a club cracker body of Christ? Can we get a multi-grain body of Christ? Can we, get, can we get a chicken and biscuit body of Christ? Can we get a white cheddar cheese it to represent the body of Christ? Oh, some good crackers right there, man. I'm just hungry all the time, man. Y'all not going to judge me in here, man. I travel a lot now, man, I'm doing stand-up comedy, man. We're about to go on tour, man. We're going to be everywhere, man. We're going to live in the airport. We're going to live in the airport, man. I don't like flying out of LAX, man. It's too much pressure. They be doing too much at LAX. Calm down, man. Why they so uptight? They stress you out as soon as you get there. You're not even flying. You're just dropping your favorite auntie off. They yelling at you as soon as you pull up. You pull up to the terminal, keep it moving, keep the cars moving. Keep it moving. Keep, don't stop, keep driving. You done, you done drove in a circle like, where are you going? And you're honest, confused. He said, keep it moving. You done, you done had to leave and come back. So you come back thinking there's going to be a different security guard. Like, as soon as you get there, it's a lady now. Keep it moving, just keep it moving. You done kick your aunt out the car. The car is still moving. You done kick your aunt out the moving car. She rolling in the rearview mirror. Luggage is flying. This is your favorite auntie just rolling in the rearview. Her wig is still in the front seat. She done left her wig in the front seat. You done drove off with your aunt. I'm sorry, Aunt Katie. The door is still open. Your aunt is bald-headed at the airport, confused. Looking for her luggage like... I think this is mine, young man. Can you? And the intensity doesn't stop there. Then when you get inside the airport, they got the kiosks set up all over the place. So now they don't want you to come up to the counter. They want you at the kiosk. You ever try to go to the counter? They tell you to go to the kiosk? Yes, I would. No, go to the kiosk. Well, I just had to go to the kiosk. I just had a few questions. Ask the questions to the chaos. <laughs> and your aunt is confused. She old school. She don't know what the kiosk is. She... I don't know what I'm doing here. It's just... My fingers are cold. It's not coming up. Then they're yelling at you. As soon as you get to the TSA part, yelling at you immediately. You didn't even get around the corner yet. They're yelling at you personally. You hear them yelling. Put everything in the bin. Put everything in the bin. Separate everything. Take your lotions out. Put them in a separate bin. Put your kneecaps in there. Put your ankles in the separate bin, your ankles in one bin, your knees in the other one. Put your collarbones in a bag. 
Put your eyebrows in the bin. <laughs> Fellas, put your Adam's apples in the bin. Ladies, put your ovaries in a bag. Put those in the bin on top of the laptops. <laughs> Sick of them yelling at me, man. When I get on the flight, man, like, tell me if I'm petty for this, man. If I if I'm on a, if I'm a, if I get the window seat on the flight, and you on the aisle seat, I don't want you looking out my window. <laughs> Am I being petty for this? I don't want you looking out my window, man. I earned this window seat, man. I changed my seat online. You should have did the same if you wanted to reap the lavish benefits of these visuals out here. That wing and them clouds, that's on my Instagram, man. You want to take a, pic take a picture of the aisle. That's all you, man. Hashtag it wheels up. We know you flying. We know you traveling. With the window visual, that's all me, man. It's lavish out here. Am I being petty for this? Am I wrong? And I don't like it when people lean forward like my head is in the way. I lean right with him, like, what you looking at? I block the window with my back. I'll be like, that's Cleveland down there, but you'll never know that. Don't look out my window, man. And they be like, actually, that's not your window. Oh, it's not my window? I'll shut the window down. How you love that? That's what you do when it's your window. You open it and shut it at your leisure. Because it's your window. But I'm petty. Humph. <laughs> I hate it when people don't wake me up for snacks on flights. <laughs> wake me up for the snacks, man. Don't leave me out here like this. I want the snacks, trust. Okay, how tired I am. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, sure. I want in on these snacks. Because when you wake up and you got no snacks and everybody else is snacking it up, that's heartbreak city, man. And that looks like a Thanksgiving Day feast when you got nothing for yourself. Maybe eating in slow motion. People be laughing hard at nothing. I'm sitting over there, lips ashy, like, oh, you couldn't wake me up, huh? You should have let me look out your window. Oh. Touche. <laughs> Touche. My voice is all dry. I sound like the TJIF theme song. Whatever happened to predictability? <laughs> Newsman, the paper boy. Evening TV, his voice was dry as hell. His voice was dry. I don't know where they got his voice from. His voice needed Jergens immediately. But he was singing for every show on TJIF. Remember all those shows? It was the same guy for every show. Remember Step by Step? That was him. Dry voice and everything. Step by Step. Day by day. They tried to bring a girl in. She was like, they about to get on out of here. I'm singing the jingles out here. You done made my voice get moist, girl. Hand, 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 me, that, hand me that Bisquick mix off the shelf. It's for my vocals. You got to get them right. Remember Family Matters? It was the same guy. Family Matters, same dude singing the song. A lot of people didn't even know it was the same guy. First of all, Family Matters is a spinoff of Die Hard. I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> Carl Winslow was the same cop from Die Hard. But that song, though, it was the same dry voice individual, man. Voice was raspy as ever. It's a rare condition. This day and age. He was in the studio killing it, too. Reading the good news on the newspaper page. Love the tradition of a grand design. Wait, hold on, hold on. Cut the track, hold on. I sounded a little moist on that note, didn't I? I thought so, I thought so. Hand me that tidy cat cat litter for my throat. Cue it back up. Hey, um, I got, <laughs> I'm all, everybody been talking about the merchandise they got. I sell these wristbands that say, uh, live it lavishly on there. So if you live it lavishly, buy some, man. Only $5. <laughs> it's only $5, you know what I'm saying? And part of the proceeds go to a United Negro College Fund. And the Negroes I'm referring to are my two sons. So if y'all can put in on that, it'd be great. My name is Tony Baker, man. Thank y'all so much.